Hey everyone, Aquarium Basics here. Um, this is a kind of secondary canister filter video that'll talk a little bit about filtration and uh, some of the old stuff I even used to talk about too. Um, you know, so every filter I've ever bought, and you know, they come with the the filter inside it. They usually give you like two or three, and um, you know they're. They're really not that good. They're good biologically, like they will hold on to biology, but there's very little like sediment unless you're ending up buying a high quality filter and bought this canister filter thinking that it would be everything I needed. It was just going to solve every problem in the world. And even though it did immediately start cleaning the water better, uh, noticed instantly uh, I needed uh, a propeller for the oxygen. I noticed instantly that I needed, um, you know, just some other things. Uh, and and then what started happening was is I was hearing this kind of and uh, and what that turned out to be I guess is that at first I thought it was just natural like it was filling up air or something you know just naturally through whatever CO two going into the tube or something but I think what was actually going on is is they give you these polish pads just like in every filter they give you the polish pad and and it will work maybe even for as far as two months. But there is no re, uh, there is no re, you know, you're not going to be able to reuse it at all. And it'll slow you down. And even in those beginning months, you're going to find that, you know, your filter's not working at high efficiency. They're just giving you that. It'll do an immediate job of polishing the water. But once it really is kind of clogged up, it's almost youth useless. And then what I found was with this natural National Geographic here is that the polishing pad, and they even had this little, uh, like a carbon pad as well, you know, and I washed them out, cleaned them probably two times in the period of two or three months, and the whole time there was that, you know, hissing bubble pop kind of sound, and what I found out was is that it being the last thing that they were saying to put in the cartridge, it was clogging up so badly that it was causing my pump to just fight, basically, and and that buildup, what that sound was, was not an air bubble. It was actually the buildup on that pad that was blocking the uh, flow of things to finally break free. And it finally, basically, just out of pressure, just broke some hole wherever, you know, most convenient. So, anyway, I just found that it was the same old story with every pump. And, oh, sorry about that, everybody. And I just, you know, the hard thing is, is that, you know, 100, I got this on sale. So, uh, but $100 later you know, thinking that I had gotten this, you know, 80 gallon aquarium thing, really truly feeling as if finally got it, you know, I got the money, I, I just won't have to mess with this, I won't have to go behind the tank to get the filters, there's a lot there and as to why someone would want one of these, uh, besides just cleaning the water better, so you would hope it would, and already I was skeptical of it because it had very small hoses, in fact, I don't even think it's uh, you know, I think it's maybe, I don't even think it's half inch. I think it's almost some kind of four fifths, you know, half inch or something. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not quite even the same half inch hosing that I have downstairs. So I don't understand that. Maybe it's just the thickness of the hose or something, but Anyway, I'm just kind of already skeptical about a few flow rate issues and stuff. And, uh, and then it said self priming on it as well. And I'll tell you one thing, it does not self-prime. And in fact, I'm not, now that I think about it, it could have very well been the blockage of the pads that were preventing the true uh, flow ease that it needs to do that. So I don't know if they just throw the pads in there just to give you something, you know, and maybe they just assume everybody's going to use whatever it is they already have. But I, in the past, with those older filters that hung on the back, I, after much trial and error turned to using the shower proof material which just came to me and I have talked about that in the past with some of my older filters and it's just essentially this you know you know it's probably not totally food grade but I doubt it's dangerous if they're giving it to people for their daily washing and bathing and things like that and so you know cutting that up seemed to be really good at first it takes a day or two to get the real fine stuff to start actually catching but once it does the problem almost was it worked so good the filter would accumulate stuff really fast because it just was so but at least it was washable and you could reuse it so what's so ironic now is is i've actually turned to that and what i tried here was is i 
I got rid of their little charcoal polishing pad altogether because everybody knows that's not going to do anything. And I took the regular polishing pad, I stripped it down by a third, but I kept its, you know, its shape basically. And then that remains at the very bottom of the uh, canister filter, not at the very top where the filter pulls and stuff. And then what I did was, is at, on top of those pellets they give you, I stuffed in the uh, the shower poof material. And it, it just, you know, it's netting. That's all it is. It's a plastic netting, inert, um, and it really grabs bacteria. Bacteria seems to love it. Um, I'm telling you that I have really good luck with this stuff I use in my uh, aquaponics, you know. But someone who's wealthy and, and doesn't mess around would say, oh, well, I'm not going to mess with anything that isn't proven. But reality is you actually might very well find something that's much, much better than what, you know, you're, uh, you're getting otherwise, you know, with the store and thinking that you're purchasing something of high value. So anyway, that's the, you know... That's this video. I had a few other things I want to put into it. I mean, I suppose I could, actually. And and now, I'll go ahead and talk about it. I've got the box right here. I was going to make two videos, but I'll just make one. This is uh, one thing I realized, too, is that I still was having massive algae problems. And realizing that I had to get the, let's see here, the uh, propeller head there. Um, realizing that I that was another purchase, you know, to stir up the air to get the oxygen, which you're not aware of, and it's $25, even if you get the smallest one, which is actually even too powerful. <laughs> but the, the thing is that all of a sudden along comes a serious amount of what I've had trouble with beard algae in the way of this pump, where it pushes the water the high oxygen areas, and the main reason, I think, is the fish are unwilling to go to that area to actually eat the beard algae. So it becomes that entire stream of flow is something that your, you know, your little Siamese algae eater is not going to want to hang out on. So it becomes this really bad deal. And then as that happened, more and more algae started accumulating. So it actually almost in a way I felt as if my algae problems were getting worse again. And, uh, and then all of a sudden I thought, well, okay, you know, I'll buy the... UV sterilizer, which was the option in the filter that I bought that wasn't on sale. So it had UV sterilizer in it, and it was about $50 more. And then, you know, reading about UV sterilizers after even seeing the advertisement at the store and I bought this was like, well, what is that, you know? And then you read about how it helps with, I guess they want to say it completely, you know, or does eliminate free-floating parasites, things like that, that really also harm the fish very, very badly. So it's not just about, uh, you know, even they said, somehow they said it promotes the biology filter. And I still don't understand how that can be possible if the water's floating through there. But, uh, you know, you don't know. And what I can't believe is, though, is that the one I bought, this one down here, I don't even know what it's called because I don't want to make this video a product tutorial. I'm talking about canister filters. I'm talking about UV, UV sterilizer. First time experience, basically. And, and that is valuable in its own. You may know more about aquariums than me, uh, but my first time buying what's out there right now is a pretty good thing to think about that you may not know. And uh, so anyway, just, you know, first time buyers, it said it was rated for 50 gallons. And I thought, well, okay, I've got a 30. And the 50 is, you know, okay, if it, it may be one day I might upgrade to a 50 and at least it'll work or maybe get two or something. And, uh, and so all of a sudden I just kind of decided to buy it. And, uh, you know, it was $65, $70 by taxes, I think. And I almost don't even want to admit how much I paid for it. And it, you know, it had been about three or four months since I bought the original filter here that I've been doing. So I had a little money, you know, it's not like I'm out here splurging for it. So I'm just saying these two things are a huge upgrade from what most people would be like beginner aquariums to finally actually realizing what the tanks really need and and how to have them operate at their highest level and I'm sure you could DIY even maybe even the ozone uh, I'm not sure the UV sorry and uh, the main thing you know what I'm getting at here is that you know I want to tell you that the the filters are good. A lot of those filters, even spill filters on the sides, they're great, but you're going to have to figure out some kind of alternative medium for them. And 
buying it from the pet store, I even tried alternatives and I tried to buy different things and none of them worked. And, you know, so they tell you you can only have a fish every five gallons, but with these poor working filters, you can almost only have a fish every like 10 gallons. And they're not telling you that. And then they're saying, you know, you have too many fish. So um, anyway, yeah, I'm talking a lot here. The main thing is, is that these fish I am extremely uh, happy about because I haven't killed any in quite a while. So I will say this also is that these two products having, you know, been purchased, I haven't had any real fish issues lately. And that's been a nice relief. And, and the plants are doing really well. I, I you know, I, I just don't want to make this all about the plants. But, I mean, things are going really well. I mean, you know, let's just keep it on that, not even look at that National Geographic thing at this point. So, uh, only a, a minute or two left here, I promise. Uh, the thing is, is that, you know, with that UV thing, I expected it, I was expected it to have more of a flow rate. And I thought that it would be, you know, it came with a pump and everything. And what is disappointing with so many other aquarium things like this is that it just barely flows. It's this little drip and maybe they, maybe that's, maybe it's dangerous to the fish or something. Maybe that's what's going on is that they want to prevent the danger to the fish. But I was under the assumption that it would do, because if that's the flow rate that it has, it would take nearly an hour or two to even exchange that tank, if not even more. So that does not mean that it's sterile. It means that it's mostly sterile. So, um, but who knows? I, I don't know. Um, I'm just trying to do what I can to A, keep this tank. Uh, and the main thing was the algae, obviously, because as I'm trying to do these YouTube videos and I, I, you know, I've worked so hard to build this up and then to see the algae come back, it was like, oh my God. So trimmed a lot of stuff off. In fact, that last video was about um, having the plants so big because I was actually trying to block the algae by having the taller, bigger plants kind of block out some of that major uh, area and stuff that that would accumulate. So uh, still, like, I cleaned it out. You have to do that. You have to maintenance the tank. There's times where those plants just need trimming or they're going to start killing other plants. And, and the fish do start running out of room, too. And, and so, uh, you know, let's just say that the, uh, you know, the algae came back. I knew it would. And I bought that sterilizer. And it was, uh, you know, a lot of money. It does seem to do something. But until I get that filter dialed in with my own medium, it will never work. And so your UV thing's a waste of time anyway, because you got a clogged, uh, you know, whatever bulkhead, whatever they call that on there. Uh, you've got, you know, tubes that are getting filled with almost like a bacteria substance because they're moving so slowly all of a sudden. It's wearing on your motor. I mean, you know, so you've got to find a better way than to think that you're going to put that polish head in there. That's my experience. If you're a wealthy man, you can buy five, 10 of them at the same time at the store, take them home, exchange them once a week. There you go, you know, or what, even once a month, I guess. But I just, I'm not that person. I want to find something that I'm not going to the store. And, 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 and at the same time, I, you know, and, and I don't want this to be a negative thing about National Geographic because believe it or not, between the, um, between the heater that I bought from them after I had one before, the heater is much better. Um, I bought just kind of a generic glass heater or a, just a simpler brand. And this one is, it just, you can see it that it's extremely uh, well-built, professional, well-designed. It looks heavy duty. And, uh, and then same with my old spill filter. I had an Aquion and then I had a National Geographic, which by itself would never do a tank like this. And that's why I had them together. But the thing with the, the thing with that spill filter as well, the National Geographic, I did fix it, and the product itself worked really well. So I just, I guess this whole video is really about polish pads. Just, you know, they sell them to you. It's just you're gonna have to figure something out. And I go with the shower proofs, and uh, that's it. I promise this video to be short. So I just wanted to talk about those two products, and and then mostly about just kind of that. I would say you know, graduating to senior year, junior year of aquariums when you realize that no longer the spill filter is going to be adequate or the worse, the bubble 
the bubble maker. And for me, I just can't stand the noise of those things, you know. The, and then they spritz a lot of water up top, getting all kinds of things stained with the aquarium water. And, uh, there, you know, I... I I have had a lot of bubblers, even as a child, and they tell you or they teach you that it's something that they really need. But uh, the stirrer, even in a tank with uh, with just a spill filter or something else, the stirrer would actually probably do better than that, even so the bubble wand. Um, yeah, all right, so uh, that's it. Um, Aquarium Basics, and this is about a follow-up to the uh, canister filter along with the UV. All right, bye.